Destruction of standards. Do we still have a future on our planet? I know it's a loaded question, so let's pay attention. I became more aware during my travels around the world in 1972 when I encountered groups of different people that pointed out there are limits to the growth of our society. I know in those days it was more popular to be a hippie or somebody that went totally his own ways, the Beatles, the music, the sound, everything had changed. But there were two futures in theory. One, loosely termed sustainable development, where energy and materials and the expansion in the balance with the planet's capacity. In other words, in a simple way to say, it would come to an end. The other was an overshoot collapse, where you ignore the limits and go full speed ahead and grow as much as you can Still, you cannot do it anymore. Unfortunately, we took the second path as a society. I am talking 1972, folks. So that is 1972 till 2000. That was 28 years plus 2020 is 48 years, almost 50 years ago. All right, just to stay in perspective, as a generation, we were making fun, becoming rich, doing whatever it takes to destroy this world. In the process, we were amazed that our kids changed. Why do you think it was? The answer we must give to our children when we speak with them, that we took that second path. And since 1979, 72, Population material uses energy. Use of energy has approximately doubled several times. In other words, are you still interested in forming a judgment on how the planet is doing? We must come to the following conclusion. Depending on where you look and where you want to start, stepping back, we're undergoing one of its periodic die-offs. How else can you explain a pandemic we are facing today? It's not the continent, except where we manage renewable resources sustainably and the climate is changing quickly. So we are not doing too well as a society. There is a saying, I know if something cannot go on forever, it probably will not. Our growth will not go on forever. It will stop one way or another. Like I said before, our growth will not continue forever. It will stop one way or another. And I think that we have triggered a set of ecological, physical tipping points. So what people do make no difference. So what we as people do doesn't make a difference anymore, folks. Does that mean that we destroyed the standards? Or do we see it from a different perspective? I will go into church, make a difference, if they ever take a stance. For over 2000 years, in every generation, there were doomsday prophets predicting the end time as Armageddon and the second coming of the Lord. They preached it from pulpits across the world they preach the second coming. They teach believers to wait on the next coming of Jesus, which is imminent. Thus confronted with what we are is a grave deception that alienates believers from receiving the promise of the gospel, an act that has robbed them of the opportunity to enter the promises of life. Does that mean we made our third fatal mistake? Not 
proving the truth? So the big question is, what is the truth in face of this pandemic, in face of the hurricanes, in face of all the disasters happening, flooding, kids going berserk and starting to knife people down, put fires on in neighborhoods that has never occurred before? What would solve the problem? Now, the alternative was, in 1968, a club of Rome was founded in 1968 as an international society of politicians, business leaders, society, and scientists, who appealed for mutual tolerance, understanding, and solidarity about the real problems of the world and the environmental issues. So how can we solve this problem or these issues? They enacted a club of Rome, founded in 1968 in Maastricht. It is an international society of politicians, business leaders, scientists who appeal for mutual tolerance, understanding and solidarity about the real problems of the world and the environmental issues. The members of the club prescribed uh, setting limits to human expansion over nature. They explained superfluously anthropocentric confidence after the words of foundation members. They explained excessively anthropocentric confidence. In other words, humanity is in the forefront after the words of the foundation member, Aurelio Pesey. Recently, economists, philosophers, and politicians criticized these ideas of the Club of Rome and described as environmental alarmists. In other words, as groundless alarm relevant to incorrect notion about the inevitability of ecological crisis and its devastating consequences for humanity. However, the global environmental crisis is already an undeniable fact. It required thorough studies of the ethical standards of human behavior. However, the global environmental crisis is already an undeniable fact. It requires thorough studies of ethical standards of human behavior. It is also rooted in more phenomena, such as consumerism, irresponsibility, insensitivity, or even selflessness. One cannot consider nature as a source of natural resources or benefit to people. Despite the power of modern science or moral motive of nature, conservation is one of the main ideas of the founding and followers of the Club of Rome. It concerns the future. Respect for the values of nature is a new moral principle. Now, my question to you is, and also I ask myself, what does that have to do with us? We lived like there was no tomorrow. We sang, we danced, we drugged, we did everything that God had forbidden. We left the churches, we did whatever we designed, desired to do. But what did we accomplish? Now, 2020, we have a president in the White House that blames the opponent for all the wrong things while he is in power. We have leadership that takes on the responsibilities of nothing as long as they can fill their pockets while they are in office. And we have spiritual leadership dropping the pants because they want to associate with somebody that is pregnant. And uh, excuse me, where are we today? It looks that we lack leadership. Christianity, believers, people that followed men mental programs or spiritual programs. What are you doing? What we see today, folks, has been predicted 2,000 years ago, not as the end time, but as a time that change will occur. We will have to face the new normal, and that new normal is not going to be normal because what we are doing today is self-destruction. Is that what you're aiming for? Well, congratulations, you succeeded. Why can I say that? I had the privilege to travel 
and I traveled uh, in a poor man's uh, business thing. I had the privilege of traveling around the world, in the beginning with the youth group, then as a merchant marine. I was not rich, but I worked my way around it. And as I worked from harbor to harbor, I had a chance to meet with the people, sometimes preach in the churches, work for, uh, with a group in Hong Kong as a missionary in Thailand. So it was the Chinese community that sent me out to a group of Chinese people in Thailand where I worked with them and I really got to know people from another side. Folks, it is not normal that we're killing and shooting and maiming each other. Can we not ask ourselves, what have we done? And are we responsible how our kids turn out to be if we don't tell them how they have to grow? This is what I like to do. I love horses. I love to see them walk around in the corral. I like to sit on them and ride a horse. It is awesome. But if you talk to some other people that fell off a horse because they got kicked up or they fell down and broke their back, struggling to retain life or to regain life. Like when my wife hit the ground because she was thrown off a horse, I was very concerned. And yes, we changed our behavior. But folks, life is not just having fun. It feels more like we are in a pen with goats and we're all fighting to survive. Is that what we're really aiming for? In a goat pen, fooling around. I agree, there is a lot more fun walking in the woods, seeing the leaves change, and also having peace. Peace is something that we are lacking because our society is so ingrained in violence, movies, social media, governments, attack upon attack upon attack instead of understanding that there is something else going on. I would love to talk more about this, but I realize we are limited to the extent of how much people can absorb but I will make more videos on this subject. Do you have the peace of the Lord in your life? Is this the end time? Or is there no end time? And is this just us understanding our responsibility as a generation that has done everything to destroy this world? This is my question. Brer Kayla, PhD, which stands for Post Hole Digger, Tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. Another update from Br'er Caleb, PhD. A conversation between the heart and the head. Why did you put me behind a shield? The heart asked. For your good, the head replied. How is that? The heart asked. The shield will protect you from pain, the head said. Are you sure? Asked the heart. Pretty sure, yes, the head replied. But do you ever wonder if I am happy with this situation? The heart asked. You never asked me if I wanted to live behind a shield. You just placed it there the day you decided it was needed. And since then, you have not had a heartache, have you? The reaction of the head. That's what you think, said the heart. But that is only partially true. It is true that since that day, I have not been hurt anymore by people who could come so close that they could wound me. But I am in pain all the time. Because I was left here alone, I am entirely in my uppy, and no one, not even you, still connects with me. I am a heart, and love is my life energy. I am at my best when I can both give and receive love. But none of that is happening because of the shield. The shield you placed before me without asking me how I thought. I know you put it with the best intentions, but the protection does me more harm than good. I'm a heart. I have to love it. Being love. Giving love. Receiving love. If I can't do that, what's the use of being there at all? Quote. The head was quiet now. Confused, it understood that the heart had just said something significant. But what about the fears? 
what about protection? Without the shield, the center would be so vulnerable. It could hurt. And that is always painful. But heart, said the head, would you rather live without the shield? Do you want me to take the guard away, exposing you to so many dangers, or the possibility of being hurt again? Yes, said the heart. For I am, not made to live behind a shield. Then I might as well die. Behind a shield, I can do nothing of all the things that I have to do. I cannot breathe, I can't share. I cannot let my energy flow. I can't be who I am. I understand your concerns but please also understand this, behind the shield, I will die, and then my life would have been meaningless because then I would not have given my energy to the world. I need you to take the shield away. So I can live and be fully, ultimately. It will surprise you, what we will experience without a shield. There are so many good things available to us if only we would throw that shield away. Trust me. And help me, please. Help me by trusting me and standing by my side. Have faith that the power of my energy is much, much stronger than the power of the fears and worries that live in you. And know that even if I get hurt, I can always heal again. Trust me. I can handle it. That is life. If I couldn't feel a presence, I wouldn't be here. Anonymous don't you see? You, my friend watching on your cell phone or computer, you are like a battery. A battery is a device consisting of one or more electrochemical cells with external connections provided to power electrical devices such as flashlights, mobile phones, and electric cars. When your battery is supplying electric power, its positive terminal is the cathode and its negative terminal is the anode. My name is Br'er Caleb, PhD. And I am a changemaker. The pen name is of a citizen of the other kingdom, and the PhD stands for Posthole Digger, for we will continue to dig for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Less is more. Have faith.